Amen. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, a prophetic book of Isaiah, and it reads, Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and thought in her mind, what kind of salutation, what kind of greeting should this be? Verse 30, an angel said unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in your womb and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of the kingdom or of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And at this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Verse 39, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country in a hurry, into the city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come and visit me? For lo, as soon as the voice of the salutation sounded in my ears, my baby leaped in my womb with joy. And blessed is she that believed it, for there shall be a performance of the things which was told her from the Lord. There shall be a performance of the things that was told her from the Lord. There shall be absolutely, positively a performance of the things, plural more than one, that the Lord told her. Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. Verse number three, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be taxed with his wife to be. She was pregnant. And the Bible says 
And when they came there, their days were accomplished that she should deliver the child. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in the manger because there was no room in the inn. The phrase that I was speaking of as I was studying, I came across those five words, which is found in Luke chapter 2, verse number 1. The first five words, and it came to pass. This morning I want to talk about, and it came to pass. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't know what you're waiting on, but it's coming to pass. Say, I don't know what you're believing for, but the Holy Ghost told me to tell you it's coming to pass. Somebody say, and it came to pass. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, and it shall come to pass. Let me give you a little backdrop of the context on today. Here in the gospel, according to St. Luke, they were at the end of an old dispensation. A dispensation represents a time period in which God had moved and done and moved a certain way. So they was at the end of an old, somebody say old, the old dispensation. And they were on the brink of a new era, the brink of a new dispensation of time. For 400 years, God did not speak. We call those 400 years the years of silence. Theologically, the proper term is the intertestamental period. It is the silence of God. It is when God made a decision not to speak to his people. He didn't use prophets. He didn't use dreams. He didn't speak to the people. There was complete silence. But now here we are in the gospel according to St. Luke. It's getting ready to be a new dispensation. And even as I was reading and studying this word, I sense a prophetic tone to this message. And the Holy Ghost of God gave me a prophetic semi-overview of the context here in the gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 40, 26 through 45. Let me help you out. I'm going to give you nine areas of this context that is prophetic. Here in the text, they had entered into a prophetic hour of fulfillment. They had entered into a prophetic hour of fulfillment. Uh, the prophetic word that had been spoken hundreds of years earlier concerning the birth of Jesus was getting ready to happen. It was getting ready to happen. And so the wait was over. The wait was over. And now there is a word that's hoovering over your life. I don't know who I'm talking to. It might just be one person. But there is a word hoovering over your life. And now you've entered into a time of fulfillment, a prophetic fulfillment, a time of manifestation. And I came to prophesy that the wait is over. The second thing here in the text Amen. Something big was getting ready to happen. Something big. They had waited and waited for hundreds of years through the eons of time. You got to remember that, amen, God holds your times in his hands. He holds your times in his hands. God has not forgotten the word that he's spoken concerning your life. So point number two, something big was getting ready to happen. Something marvelous something miraculous, something astounding, something amazing, something astonishing was getting ready to happen, something incredible, something unbelievable, something remarkable, something revolutionary, something extraordinary, something wonderful, something that was mind-blowing was getting ready to happen. Oh, touch your neighbor. Says she talking about me in this house today. 
It was getting ready to happen. And I sense that God is getting ready to do something marvelous in your life. Amen. In which there will be no point of reference. It's something that you've never experienced before that's about to happen in your life. I came to tell you, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Your business is about to blow up. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me today. The word that God has spoken over your family is about to happen. This is the last year you're going to work that job because it's time for you to become the entrepreneur that God called you to. Your dream, amen, glory to God, is getting ready to come to pass. Clap your hands and, and give God a praise and shout, it shall come to pass. You cried your last tear. Come on here. Oh, glory to God. You've stopped. You came to the place where there will be no more worry in your life concerning that situation. Clap your hands and say it shall come to pass. So I sense that God is getting ready to do something marvelous in your life in which there would be no point of reference. It's something that you've never experienced before. Number three. Mary received a divine, angelic visitation. She received a divine, angelic visitation. Let me ask you a question. Are you ready for a visitation? Are you positioned for a visitation? Is your spirit ready for a visitation? Are you hungry for a visitation? Are you thirsty for a visitation? Are you hungry for it? Come on here. How bad do you want this visitation? Mary received an angelic visitation, but it was not just a visitation. It was a visitation with prophetic details. He came with prophetic details. And I came to tell somebody that God is getting ready to release specific information that you need to succeed in this next season of your life. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost gave me this. The Holy Ghost gave me this. He said, tell them, uh, I'm getting ready. You better get in the face of God because I'm getting ready to release specific details, information that you need to succeed in the next season of your life. You've been saying, God, what do I do? How do I do it? What's going to happen? All these. God said, I'm getting ready to speak to you in this visitation. When you get in my face, I'm going to give you the strategy. I'm going to give you the direction. Direction. I'm going to give you the insight. I'm going to show you exactly what to do for this next chapter in your life. Somebody said chapter 2021 is going to be my best year. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. And so you got to understand, amen. He's getting ready to release specific information that you need to succeed in the next season of your life. And listen here, and the details, somebody said the details. The details are going, that he's going to release is going to be pertinent information, amen, that you need that's going to impact and bless every area of your life. Oh, yeah, every area. What he's going to release is not just going to help you, amen, glory to God, spiritually, but it's going to help you financially. It's going to help every area of your life. These are pertinent information that God is going to release, and it's going to impact and bless every area of your life. If you believe that, clap your hands and give God praise. I came with a word today. I, can't, I know it's an unusual word, but it's a prophetic word for this house, for these people, and those that are listening. Verse number 26, verse number 26 says, and in the sixth month, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God, sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Let me tell you something. God knows where you are. <laughs> he knows exactly where you are. And I'm not talking about geographically. Come on here. He knows where you are mentally. He knows where you are emotionally. He knows where you are financially. He knows where you are spiritually. He knows where you are financially, economically. He knows where you are. God sent the angel to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin 
who was engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Somebody said, God got my name. I'm next. He got my name is next. Tell your neighbor, I got next. You ever, have you ever went somewhere, amen, girl, they got motor vehicles department or somewhere, and everybody is there. You just waiting for your name to be called, and then you see the number, and all of a sudden they call your name, and you're excited because you know you got next, and they're getting ready to handle business. Tell your neighbor, God's getting ready to handle your business. You've been trying to handle it too long, amen, but God's getting ready to handle your business. Business. He's getting ready to give you, amen, glory to God, what you need, amen, to get things going, to get things off the ground, to be able to get in the place that you need to be. Somebody say, Holy Ghost, handle my business. Somebody say, take over my life. Take over my, I made a mess of my life. I messed up my life. I've done all kind of stuff. But I want you to take over. Somebody say, it's about to be a Holy Ghost takeover. Somebody say, a Holy Ghost takeover. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says, amen. The sixth month angel came, sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin who was engaged to a man, amen, by the name of Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. When we look at the term the sixth month, the number six is the number of mankind. Amen. The Bible says, what is man that you are so mindful of me? I want you to know that God is mindful of you. You are on the mind of God. I know you didn't cross every T. I know you didn't dot every I, but you're on the mind of God. And so the Bible gives us a specific time in the sixth month. This represents number four. It's the set timing of God. The set timing of God. Everybody said the set timing of God. The Bible said to everything there is a season, right? And there is a time for every purpose under the heaven. You have purpose. You are under the heaven. The very fact that you are still alive, the very fact that you're watching me today, the very fact that you're sitting here today means, amen, that you still have purpose. Amen. And God is going to do some things in your life. You are under the heaven, and this is the set timing of God. Then the Bible says, amen, at this set timing, the angel comes, amen, here in verse number 28. The Bible says, and the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. So here, number five, the angel Gabriel comes in the sixth month and release a threefold prophetic declaration over Mary. He releases a threefold prophetic declaration over Mary in verse number 28. I'm going to prove it to you. The first thing he says to her is, hell, thou that are highly favored. Lay your hands on yourself as Deacon is white would tell us, the favor of the Lord is upon us. <laughs> yeah, the favor of the Lord is upon us. So he comes and he says, hell, thou that are highly favored. The first thing he says to her and that God is saying to you is that you are highly favored. You highly favored. I don't care, amen, you may be robbing Peter to pay Paul, but you highly favored. I know you might be behind on your car, no, but you highly favored. I know you don't know how you're going to pay your rent next month, but you're highly favored. I mean, you got to walk by faith and not by sight. You got to go by what he say and not by what you see. Who am I talking to today? You got to walk by faith and not by sight. You can't go by what you see. You got to go by what he say. Tell your neighbor, I sense something in my spirit that my mind don't know yet. Somebody said, help me tell my mind to stop worrying because the spirit is telling me it's already all right. Clap your hands in this place and give God a prize. So the first thing he says, amen, in this threefold prophetic declaration over Mary, over you, he said, you are highly favored. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, I am highly favored of the Lord. In other words, he says, you're just not favored. This is just not favor. You are highly favored. 
You are highly favored. This is unprecedented favor that you're getting ready to experience. This is unheard of favor, unexpected favor, uncommon favor. You're getting ready to experience favor that has never been seen before. Life-changing favor, life-authoring favor. People talking about you favor. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. A ridiculous favor. Supernatural, uncommon favor is getting ready to come up on your life. Tell your neighbor it's on me now. I sense it. I feel it. Amen. The hair on the back of my neck is standing up. Amen. Glory to God. My toes is tingling. Come on here. I feel the Holy Ghost all over me. God is talking to me. I am highly favored. Tell her you're highly favored. The second thing he says to her, the second declaration, he says, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Number one, you highly favor, Sister Renee. The second thing is the Lord is with you. Have you ever felt like God is not with you? See, see, those are feelings. Those are your emotions. You can't go by what you feel because what you feel will deceive you. What you feel is not always true. Come on here. Those are your emotions. He said, you need to know that the Lord is with you, Mary. Now, you got to understand that Mary is like, uh, uh, according to scholars, this, this girl is like 14 years old. She's 14 years old, and we would think when she received that word or you received that type of word, amen, you would start rejoicing and be happy. But she understood there was a price to pay for that word. There was a price she was going to have to pay for that word because she's 14 years old and she's engaged. How is she going to explain to her to be husband that she's pregnant, but she's supposed to be a virgin? Come on here, glory to God. How is she supposed to explain that? Amen. He said, I want you to know that the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. You highly favored. The Lord is with you. He said, you need to understand, amen, that he's with you. Amen. Mary, they're going to talk about you because what God is doing in your life don't look like God. Yeah, it don't look like God. It doesn't look like God. What God. Sometimes God does things in our life and uses us in a certain way and causes things to happen. It doesn't look like God. Come on here. Somebody said, I'm dealing with some stuff right now. It don't look like God. It doesn't look like God. And maybe because they're going to start talking about you. It doesn't look like God. Amen. Your, your fiance is not going to believe you until I give him a visitation. It doesn't look like God, but the Lord is with you. And I came to tell somebody, I don't know what you're dealing with, but the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that the Lord is with you. I know, amen, you came up against, amen, some struggles, but the Lord is with you. I know your back is against the wall right now, but the Lord is with you. I know things ain't working out the way you want them to work out, but the Lord is with you. I know your agenda ain't coming together, but throw your agenda away and receive the agenda of the Lord. The Lord is with you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Stop leaning to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and let him direct your path. The Lord is with you. I know you got tears running down your face but the Lord is with you. I know you can't sleep at night but the Lord is with you. I know the devil lying to you but the Lord is with you. I know the devil telling you you're going to fail but the Lord is with you. I know you're ready to get a drink but the Lord is with you. I know you're ready to go back in the street but the Lord, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Everybody ain't gonna understand it, but the Lord is with you. Some people you're gonna have to stop being with in 2021, but the Lord is with you. I know some people get ready to walk out your life, but it's all good, boo. The Lord is with me. If you never be with me, as long as God is with me. He said he'll never leave you or he'll never forsake you, Deacon his wife. The Lord is with you. So he wanted her to understand. You favored of the Lord. It may not look like it. Amen. But you're favored of God. Amen. And the second thing he wanted her to understand, amen, is that the Lord, the Lord, when you look at the word Lord, in, in the Greek, in the uh, Hebrew, it is Adonai, the master. So he said, the master is with you. The one that calmed the sea is with you. The one that raised the dead is with you. The one that's in control is with you. The one that regulates your blood is 
is with you. The one that's keeping you alive is with you. The Lord is with you. The master of the sea is with you. The one that walked on the waves, he's with you. The one that raised the dead, he's with you. 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 So when they start talking, he's with you. When they don't understand, he's with you. When the bill comes, he's with you. Oh, come on, somebody. Who am I preaching to? He said, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. I know it's not going to look like it. Amen. But the Lord is with you. He's with you. When they start whispering about you, the Lord is with you. Just know that the Lord is with you. Then the third thing he tells her, the third declaration is that you blessed among women. You blessed. I know you don't feel like you're blessed, but you blessed. Come here, I know it don't look like you're blessed, but you blessed. Can I tell you, somebody want to trade places with you today. Somebody is envying you today. Somebody is jealous of you today. Somebody is scared of you today. You making boss moves. Come on here. And then they say, hold up. Come on here. Somebody, amen, with crap mentality want to pull you down. Oh, but I came to tell you, the Lord is with you and you're favored of the Lord. You're blessed among women. You're blessed among women. Stop comparing yourself to other people. You are blessed. Stop measuring yourself to other people. You are blessed. Stop being so hard on yourself. You are blessed. This is the best season of your life. I know it don't look like it, but you need to give God praise. Amen. Because he has blessed you in the pandemic. He has kept you alive in the pandemic. You could have been in the number in the pandemic. Other people have died in the pandemic. Other people, glory to God, amen, glory to God, are suffering, amen, from lasting effects of the pandemic. But look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. You said, well, you know what? My family got it. But look at God. He delivered your family. You ought to give God praise. Could have been your mama. Could have been your daddy. But God. He spared. Because the hand of the Lord is upon you. The favor of God is upon you. And you're blessed among women. You're blessed among other people. Stop comparing yourself. We somebody, amen, in here today, you you judging yourself, trying to compare yourself to other people. Be who God has called you to be. Come on here. There's another version of you that you ain't even tapped into yet. Come on, somebody. Trying to be like somebody else. Be the best version that you can be of who God has called you to be. You're blessed among women. I'll tell your neighbor, God has positioned me among some great people. But I recognize the greatness that's inside of me. And I ain't intimidated by none of y'all. Come on here. Clap your hands and give God praise. So he gives us this threefold prophetic declaration over her life. He said, you're favored. You're getting ready to experience unprecedented favor. Unheard of favor. Unexpected favor, uncommon favor, never seen before favor, life-changing favor, life-altering favor. People going to start talking about your kind of favor. Ridiculous favor, supernatural favor, uncommon favor. And the Lord is with you. I know it don't look like it, but he's with you. He's with you. And you're blessed among women. Psalm 102 verse 13 says, Thou shall arise. And have mercy upon Zion. The word of the Lord has to come, amen, alive in your life. I'm going to say it again. The word of the Lord has to come alive in your life. So when we look here at this text, Psalm 102, verse 13, he said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. Where it says Zion, you need to put your name there. Put your name there. Move Zion. Put your name there. For the time to favor her. Yes, the set time is coming. The set time of God's favor has come for your life. I told you, amen, to everything there was a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. God has your time in his hand. He said the time to favor her. The time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Verse number 32, and I'm hurrying to a close. He goes on to say, 
he shall be great. You see, you're carrying something great. He shall be great, and he shall be called the son of the highest. He said, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, verse number 33, and he shall reign, rule, take authority over the house of Jacob forever, eternal. Somebody say eternal. Forever means eternal. Forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So what is God saying here to her? He said, the there's a seed of greatness that's in the womb of your spirit. There is a seed of greatness that's lying in the womb of your spirit. There is a seed of greatness. Greatness starts out small. And as it is watered, as it germinates, it begins to grow. When you see... Glory to God, an oak tree, know that it started with a small seed. So he said, you shall be great. So the seed of greatness is growing in the womb of your spirit, and you are going to give birth to something so great. And what you birth forth is going to bless people long after you leave the earth. See, we're we looking at now, God, so I'm going to give you something that's going to be eternal, that's going to last when you go, tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, greatness takes time. Come on, say greatness takes time. Say what God is doing in me is going to outlive me. Come on, everybody say what God is doing in me is going to outlive me. Glory to God, it's going to outlive me. I'm going to leave a deposit in the earth. They're going to know I was here in the earth. Come on here. I'm going to leave a book in the earth. I'm going to leave, amen, amen, a business in the earth. I'm going to leave something in the earth that's going to outlive me, and it's going to be great. So when he said, amen, it shall be great, he said there's a seed of greatness on the inside of you. Tell your neighbor, I'm pregnant with greatness. Tell somebody else, I'm pregnant with greatness. Amen. In the womb of your spirit. So the seed of greatness is growing in the womb of your spirit. And you're going to birth something so great. And what you birth forth is going to bless people long after you leave the earth. Verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? How shall this be? That's the number one question. We always want to try to figure out. And I get it. Some of us are very analytical. We try to figure out things, and it's a time to be analytical, and it's a time to have faith and trust God. You do what you're supposed to do and leave the rest up to God. So she says, just like we would do, he didn't spoke this great word over her life. She said, how is this going to be? How is this going to be? Because I know and God know my position biologically. I am a virgin. So how is this going to be? I don't know a man. How is this going to be? And the angel said unto her, the Holy Ghost. Woo! We underestimate the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to have to teach a series on the Holy Ghost and the person of the Holy Ghost, the position of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, the preeminence of the Holy Ghost. So he says, the power of the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. Verse number seven. I'm sorry, point number seven. The birthing of greatness shall be orchestrated by the Holy Ghost. The birthing of greatness is orchestrated by the Holy Ghost. It's God ordained and he put the seed there. What are you doing to germinate? What are you doing to water it? Are you spending time with God? Are you feeding yourself with the word of God? What are you doing to germinate what God had placed on the inside of you? The birthing of greatness is orchestrated by the Holy Ghost. He said, I want you to know, don't you worry about a thing. The Holy Ghost is going to do his part. You just do your part. Okay, she had to do her part naturally, right? She had to carry the baby. She had to feed the baby, right? She had to nurture the baby. She had to do her part naturally. But the supernatural part was coming from God. Okay, I'm going to give you a case in point. Remember when Moses was at the Red Sea, he started crying out to God, what are we going to do? The Egyptians are behind us. What do we do? God said, what do you have in your hand? What have I given you to work with? 
Work with what I gave you. What do you have in your hand? I have a natural staff. Stick it out. Stretch it out. And when you stretch it out, I'm going to put my super on your natural. You're going to have to stretch out by faith. And then I'm going to part the Red Sea. And not only am I going to bless you to go over, I'm everybody that's connected to you is going to go over. Tell your neighbor this next blessing is not just for me, but it's going to bless my family. It's going to bless my children. It's going to bless my mama them, my cousin them, boo them, all of them coming in because I stretched out by faith. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, and it shall come to pass. Verse number 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. She didn't keep questioning him. Well, then tell me how this is going to be. No, but wait, wait a minute. Now you said what? Like he's on trial. And you're the prosecutor. And you're trying to find. <laughs> no, no, she didn't. She said, after she heard what the Holy Ghost is going to do, the Holy Ghost is going to do this thing. He's going to uh, cause this thing to come into fruition. He's orchestrating it. She said, all right then. Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. And soon as she said that, the Bible said the angel departed from her. So what does that mean? Point number eight, Mary received that word by faith. I wonder, are you receiving this word today by faith? Mm -hmm. She received that word by faith. I know it seemed preposterous. I know it seemed, wait, wait a minute, God. But God, so you know what? That's your problem. You always trying to figure out stuff. I just need you to trust me, even when you can't trace me. So Mary received that word of, by faith. And when she received that word by faith, she understood, I got to connect with somebody, amen, that's carrying something great to. Mm -hmm. Who you connected to? Who you with? Who you hanging with? Who you kicking with? So she understood, wait a minute, I heard him say, my cousin, who's an old lady who is barren, and all of a sudden now he tells me she's six months pregnant. Everybody been talking about her, because in that day when you didn't give birth, they talked about you, and you was considered barren, and they said you was cursed by God. And so here in her old age, she is pregnant. What is God saying? With God, nothing is impossible to them that believe. Nothing. Nothing. What are you dealing with right now that seems impossible? What are you looking at? What are you facing? It seems impossible. God said, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me, Sarah? Nothing too hard. So she said, hold up. If he did that in her, let me go connect with somebody that's pregnant with greatness. Let me go and connect with somebody that's going to celebrate what God had put inside of me. The worst thing you can be is connected to somebody that's jealous of you. Somebody that's hating on you. Somebody that don't want to see you blessed. Somebody don't want to see you succeed. You better make sure you get with somebody, glory to God, that's going to celebrate you, Kim. Liz want to talk about she thinks she all that. But the Bible said when she came, when she came, the Bible lets us know, glory to God, amen, that she confirmed that she was pregnant. See, God will give people in your life that will confirm what God has on you. Somebody that's going to confirm and somebody that's going to celebrate. You need somebody that's going to confirm and somebody that's going to celebrate. The Bible talks about glory to God, how she went there. Amen. Glory to God. And soon as she opened up her mouth, the Bible said that her baby leaped. Uh, theologians said that uh, Elizabeth thought she had not felt her baby move. And she was six months into the process. And they said that she thought her baby, amen, was, what do they call it? Dead. She's still born. And she hadn't felt it. But when that girl came to that door, amen, glory to God, and she saw her, and she began to get excited. The Bible said that her baby, John the Baptist, began to leap all in her womb. And she was filled with the Holy Ghost and said, look at here. Who am I that the Lord of my God going to come and visit me? Glory to God. I know I'm connected to greatness because the Lord the mother of my Lord have come to my house. 
So Mary received that word by faith. She went to see her cousin who confirmed, amen, and praised God with her. Amen. She was pregnant and began to praise God with her. They were both pregnant with greatness and began to praise the Lord. You remember Zachariah, who was uh, Elizabeth's husband, amen. He was um, mute. The enemy had, not the enemy, but the angel, amen, had came and gave him a word six months earlier, and he didn't believe. And because he didn't believe, he was struck silent, and he couldn't even talk. It's a dangerous thing not to believe the word of the Lord. His mouth didn't open until she gave birth to that baby. Come on here. God will shut people down that don't believe around you. I don't care how close they are around you. Be careful who's talking to you. You can't let folks mess you up. Your season, they start saying, babe, I think, no. Come on here. Let me close out with point number nine. And she said, blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of the things that was told to her. We play some softly. The blessed. Is she that believed? She believed. Do you believe today? Do you believe the word that's over your life? Point number nine, and it came to pass. Point number nine, and it came to pass. She believed that there would be a performance of those things. She believed that she believed the things which were told her, it says, from the Lord. From the Lord. Is it from the Lord? It shall come to pass. The thing that was spoken from the Lord, it came to pass, and it came to pass. How did it come to pass? Because Luke chapter 2 says, that it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augusta for all the world to be taxed. And the Bible said that Joseph went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth. By the way, they said nothing good can come out of Nazareth. That's another message. That's another message. Nothing good. Don't underestimate where you came from. Don't let people tell you can't nothing good. Because, you know, some of us have been scarred by negative word. And I curse every negative word that's been spoken over your life. I reverse that curse in the name of Jesus. I send it back to the pit of hell. That every word that have come and told you, and you will never be nothing. Amen. You won't amount to nothing. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You're going to be trash. You're going to be trailer trash. You're going to be like your low-down mama, your no-good daddy. All them negative words, I curse them. I curse every negative word that's been spoken over your life. He left Nazareth, got his fiance, said, I'm shedding out the clatter, uh, the clutter, the chatter, and what people are saying. She might be pregnant. I believe God. God sent an angel and told me, and it's going to be all good. We're going to be all good. God has chosen us for greatness. He's chosen us for greatness. He's chosen us to, to do great things for him. And the Bible says, as they were traveling, while the days were, and they came to be accomplished that she should be delivered, she went into labor, and she brought forth her firstborn son. I'm going to tell you something. Whatever you're pregnant with, God's going to bring it to pass. You're going to deliver it. Some of you, your spiritual water bag have broken. The Holy Ghost is your midwife. You're going to birth that thing out before the new year. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to visit you, and it's going to revolutionize your life. She bought forth that son that had been prophetically spoken, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. And it came to pass. And I came to tell somebody 
that it's coming to pass. I know it's been a long wait. I know sometimes you wanted to just give up. I know you said it seemed like the more I pray for him, the worse he get. Huh. The more I pray about the situation, the more it get. Somebody threw in the towel. Go back and pick it up. And throw it at the devil and tell him you a lie. And the father of a lie, there is no truth in you. It's going to come to pass. It's getting ready to happen. The wait is over. Mary paid that price because what she was carrying didn't look like it was God. As long as you know God is with you, as long as you know you've received pertinent information and instruction and direction from God, as long as you know you're in the will of God, that's the safest place. It's in the will of God. And so, Father, I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. I pray even now that you will begin to stir them in the Holy Ghost. Stir them in the Holy Ghost. Even now. Minister to them in the midnight hour. Wake them up and talk to them. That visitation, that visitation that you spoke of, we wait in expectation. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. What a privilege, what an honor it is to be chosen by you. I'm speaking to a chosen people. There's a chosen people watching me online right now. There's a chosen people sitting in this house right now. There's a chosen people that will listen later on YouTube. There's a chosen people. And I thank you. And I came to tell you, and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said it? Shall he not do it? Have he spoken it? Shall he not make it good? I'm a witness that he'll make it good. I'm a witness that he will bring it to pass. I'm a witness that God will do what he said he's going to do over your life. And I came to tell you the best is yet to come. Woo! Shadamiando! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just give him a wave offering and just begin to worship him for a few moments. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we bless you in this place. Father, we adore you. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness unto us, oh God. Hallelujah. We celebrate your faithfulness. Hallelujah. We celebrate your greatness. He Sata. He Sata. We celebrate your integrity. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him. He Sata. He Hey. Come on and bless him. Come on and rest on your feet. Shata. Come on and adore him. Come on, come on. Let's adore him today. Let's bless the great name of our God. Come on and lift him in this place. Come on and magnify him in this place. Because you got next. Come on, come on. Ah, oh, the wait is over. The wait is over. The wait is over. The wait is over. Wipe the tears from your eyes and begin to praise your God. Begin to bless your God. He We give you glory. We give you 
lift him. Come on and lift him. Come on and celebrate now what he's going to do later. Come on and celebrate now. It's already been released in the heaven. It's getting ready to manifest this week. It's getting ready to manifest even this week. Even this week, somebody is going to tell This is going to happen even this week. This week, I know Shata. I hear it in the Holy Ghost. He's going to demonstrate it. He's behind the scenes, pulling the strings. He's behind the scenes. He's pulling the strings. He's behind the scenes. rest in peace she always said make sure you say thank you when somebody does something for you I want you to know it's already done open your mouth and tell them thank you come on and tell them thank you God bless you tell them thank you hallelujah and we seal this word even now in the mighty name of Jesus somebody say it is so and so it is somebody say it is so Come on, say it loud. It is so, and so it is, in Jesus' name, and it shall come to pass. Amen. I want you to just turn to three people. Don't touch them. Just point and say, it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass. And it shall come to pass.